Well, Ali, a drumbeat of pessimistic housing news this week and, and concerns that there could be a double dip in housing. The good news, if the good news is there's a 4.83% mortgage rate for a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. So if you're right. in a position to buy, there is good news. But there are threats out there to the recovery that we saw earlier this year in Housing Alley. Unemployment, the biggest thing there. You got high vacancy rates, you've got record foreclosures still. Even if you think that you're at the at the at the trough, at the worst of the foreclosures, that still means you have an awful lot to go through before you start moving up again. And the end of that home buyer tax credit. A lot of people are saying that the juice from that yep. is over. Um, but we knew that, right? We knew that that was going to run out and yes. there would be a complicated period. Uh, but the, the builders, a builder confidence in, index this week, um, was, was pretty pessimistic. It showed a reading of 17. And, you know, what does that mean, you know, for, well, for the people like us who follow these reports all the time? You have to be at 50 for a positive outlook. I mean, think yeah. of that. So the people who are involved in this are, are, are still really concerned about where housing is going to go, Allie. Yeah. Although if you're if you're let's say you're you're not an economist and you, you just look at the world and you say if there are all these extra houses out there and foreclosures and vacancy rates, maybe there shouldn't be a single house in America being built. So I get that for now the builders shouldn't have a good outlook. And when you weigh the good against the bad, those low interest rates, those four point eight percent interest rates have a lot of weight compared to the other factors. These are historically low rates. That said, I think when we look at housing, you look at your housing, your housing situation. There are parts of this country where housing prices are increasing or stabilizing, and there are still where foreclosures are forcing the house prices down. So when you look at it nationally, you may see a decline over the course of the next year, but we could hear there's from somebody a lot smarter than me. <laughs> and that's Robert Schiller. He's the Yale University professor of economics and the co-author of Animal Spirits. And he's a real well-known housing expert. And, and he's been with us all along as we've been watching what's been going on in the housing market. And Robert, I mean, I think Allie and I agree here. And it, the jobs are really the key to all of this, aren't they? I mean, if you have so many people out of work, you're not in a position to either A, pay your mortgage, or B, go out and buy a new home or move uh, across the country for a promotion. I mean, jobs are really critical. Am I right? Well, we have been forecasting home prices for close to 20 years now. And you're absolutely right. We found that cities that have a slow job growth it does hurt their home price growth. That's one of other factors, though. Uh, like that what? is important. Like what? What other factors are you watching here? And, and, and are you no. concerned about another leg down for housing? Or is this to be expected once the home buyer tax credit is over and the spring, I guess some of the spring um, awakening in housing, you know, maybe now we rest and see what happens? I think, you know, a lot of people think that the question is whether we're off to the races again this year or will it be next year? My company, Macro Markets, has done a survey of uh, professional forecasters, and we found in last month's survey that even professional forecasters are predicting, you know, home prices will start starting in 2011, going up at you know two to three percent a year. But I don't know about that. You know, some of the forecasters are with me that there's another scenario that uh, is worrisome. And what is that scenario? Well, it, I would say it would be the Japanese scenario. The Japanese economy in the 1980s had a boom in the stock market and housing market. Amazing booms. Some bubbles, some psychology got going. And when that burst, home prices in Japan fell from 1991 until 2006. Every single year they went down. Ouch. 15 years of decline. So the best case scenario, I guess, or the, or the consensus scenario that you're outlying, outlining is 2 to 3 percent housing price gains starting right. maybe sometime next year. But the worst case scenario is really ugly. You know, uh, that home prices are not relentlessly upward, as we've become accustomed to think. Uh, now, just think uh, about the oil spill that we just saw. That is, a, you know, that kind of event may change our psychology and lead us to a, a period of prote protracted stagnation. Uh, it reminds me of the 1926 hurricane in Florida. There was a the famous, you remember this, the Florida land bubble in the 1920s? I, you know what? I was just a baby in the 20s. I can't quite remember <laughs> that one. <laughs> well, remember this. It was amazing. Everyone in the whole country was talking about Florida and how the prices were going through the roof. And they had this terrible hurricane in 26. It ended the bubble. It burst and prices fell. And guess when they started going up again in Florida? in the 1970s. It was a half century later before they had another boom.
All right, Robert Schiller. Well, thank Hate you. To be like that. <laughs> no, we like you to be brutally honest. That's why we okay. have you on. Okay, Robert Schiller. Thank you so much, Robert. And uh, and Ali, you know something interesting about where you are right now? There are some folks that will be yeah. um, that will actually be suspending foreclosures for people who live within 25 miles of the coast in case they're in trouble yes. right now. They don't want to lose your house on top of all of this. Yeah.